am super stoked to be joined by my friend, Brian Harris, Executive Vice President, Chief Technology Officer of SAS. <clears throat> Welcome, good to see Brian. You, good to see you. SAS and single store, I think of us as kindred spirits. We love data and analytics. We both have very powerful distributed frameworks for data and advanced analytics, AI and machine learning. Uh, we solve our customers' toughest problems. That's correct. Um, and we believe in the cloud, the hybrid multi-cloud. Tell us, uh, you're the chief technology officer of the leader in advanced analytics. You talk a lot to customers. You know, you have a vision and you see what the, what the, uh, uh, that industry, what the, that market is going. What are you hearing from the customers? What are the problems they're facing today? Everybody's talked about AI and ML. What's real and what's not? What's really bothering organizations, enterprises where the rubber meets the road? I mean, I think it all comes back to how do you uh, take analytics and operationalize it into the organization? Uh, it's a lot of work and there's a lot of specialty, you know, a lot of handoffs across the organization to make it work. And we, we call this the team sport of analytics. And so for us, we're focusing on things like composite AI, operationalizing at scale. And that's not just the scale of data, that's actually the scale of how do I enable analytic participation across the organization. So the executives all the way down to you know, the data scientist to the, maybe the decision scientist to a, you know, developer who's doing data management, you know, data preparation can all participate in delivering on the ROI of analytics. And that is a struggle for a lot of organizations. You know, there's a lot of complexity today to bring all of those capabilities together. And then lastly is portability. Uh, flexibility and portability we think are really, really critical, which is that, as you know, the market we talk about is somewhere in the order of 93% of the market is still running workloads inside their own data centers. So there's a lot of talk about going and moving to the cloud, but there's a lot of work to be done to get those workloads off and into the cloud. And then also, you know, there's also the, the case, well, which workloads need to move into the cloud? Because I think what's going to happen over the next two to three years is there's gonna be a very serious economic conversation around how do we deal with analytics and the cost of that? Because now everyone's doing it. Now people are gonna start comparing that. I've been kind of talking this concept around miles per gallon. How can I, how can I get the most effective decisions for my organization for the most appropriate cost? And that really points to how do you look at architectures that support that cost model? And that's what's got me so excited about what we're doing together as a partnership because we're working on behalf of our customers to understand how to rationalize the enterprise strategy of data and analytics in a way that allows them to have the flexibility, the system of record, the operational store to support an ecosystem of all the areas that they're making investment to do innovation. And for us, that, that for me means how can I participate against that strategy? Mm -hmm. And then the work we're doing is, I feel like, is enabling us to have the right rationalization of responsibility, separations of concerns. I want to be able to integrate with a data store that simplifies things. I want to single store it, right? All right. I want to take it and I want to run on that data and I want to move, I want to, I want to minimize data movement. I want to analyze it as fast as I can. Thousands of models to be created against that. And I want to do that economically so that I can do that both from an economic perspective and an efficiency so we can get the ROI for our customers. Where do you see the benefits of having a relational data store as part of the, as part of the SaaS uh, infrastructure? It, uh, 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 it's not an application, we're not building yeah. hardware here, but we're integrating technologies. You mentioned what we both do best, right? Yes. The data side and the analytics side. Uh, integrating analytics and data has been done before. Yes. But Solving a single pass problem versus oh, yeah. a multi pass machine learning problem at scale yes. and performing leaders. Yeah, I'll, I'll get into problems. some details on that, right? The 80 20 rule, which is that you know, most people spend 80% of their time you know, kind of preparing the data to get it to an analytically ready format. Um, imagine if we flipped a script on that and get to where we're spending 20% of our time or less on data prep, data movement, data management, and we're now focusing in on how do we run the analytics needed. And when we talk about I talk about things like, people use the word digital transformation, these buzzwords, and you just want to puke after a while, you hear them enough. The reality is that, what it means is that, as we've seen, that when people we talk digital transformation, it's when a customer is engaging you in a digital channel and they're creating an exhaust of new data that you have to process. And how do you take that data now and put decision flows with analytics against that? And those analytics could be different types of machine learning, optimization, forecasting, and what we call composite AI. I want to focus on that problem. Uh, there's enough complexity in that space for me, uh, right, as a co our, our company, to focus on solving that problem and getting the best outcomes for our customers and making the best decisions. And I want to also then uh, 
kind of wish away the complexity of dealing with, with data management of disparate systems. I think Raj and, and Jordan said earlier, all of this complexity, I've dealt with trying to join data across Elasticsearch, Postgres, and Oracle, and other, it is a nightmare. The application developer has to manage that, and then you have to go and now externalize transactions and, and all kinds of things that, you, that now are in the developer's realm, and we want to kind of put that complexity away. I want to be able to look at data. I want to be able to say, okay, where do I need to run this algorithm? Do I need to uh, run it in, inside the data store? Do I need to take the results of that outcome and pass me the cursor, which we'll talk about a little bit, and then I, we can process that data as a stream out of the data store? These are the capabilities that we believe are the kind of the next generation of analytic uh, um, kind of uh, uh, analytic processing that allows us to minimize data movement and minimize cost to our customers yeah. and maximize the return. Minimize data movement, reduce total cost of ownership. That's right. Check, check. Yes. What, however, in, what we announced today, for example, separation of storage and compute limitless storage. Yes. How, how does that resonate with you as, an, as a provider of advanced analytics? Uh, I mean, for us, again, that, that's a complexity problem that we don't have to worry about, right? So uh, in the case of the economic story for a customer, if the, I mean, there's a lot of these eventually consistent, you know, strategies out there, but it's instantly consistent, right? And the idea is that when customers, I think what I've been talking about before, that when customers have dealt with like this tiered storage model where you don't care about the kind of the content of the data, that's different. What single store is doing is really applying that same methodology to an access pattern of content aware uh, data store, right? Where based on my access patterns, we can move data to where it needs to be based on essentially the, ac the frequency of access and then push stuff into block storage or storage of choice for the customer. So from an, from an analytics company for perspective, we can look at that and go, wonderful, great story for the customer. Done. Done. Now I can take that data and stream it right out from your, uh, from single store and then do multi multiple passes on that for all types of deep neural network stuff that we want to do or whatever kind of analytics we're running. And now all of a sudden we're focused on the analytic value for our customer, right? And it's just to me, it, it opens up an opportunity to really um, advance the operationalization of analytics for the it's entire a, world. It's a great combination. It's a great story. One plus one makes three or more. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Now your CTO, you have... You lead the vision and the strategy for the technology at SAS. Yeah. Where do you see this market going? Where do you see the world of advanced analytics going? You mentioned 93% of the workloads are still yeah. on-premises, but they are moving. Not all 93% are moving, but what is that future state two, five, ten years from now? I think, uh, again, I'm going to come back to there's, there's going to be a really serious economic conversation happening on where you run. What is your site strategy, your cloud strategy? Your, uh, where do you want to run? the analytics and the complexity, and where does it make sense to run them and at what cost? So as we get through kind of the, the first, you know, crawl, walk, you know, run phase, the, the crawl, walk is we're making models operational. Okay, fine. Well, we got customers that have five, 10,000 models in operations. How do you deal with that? So there's governance, there's lineage, there's traceability that we got to make sure we can focus on and say, okay, if I'm making a decision in this part of the organization, what analytics inform that decision? what data informed that decision, who was responsible for pushing those models out. So these are kind of like, if you will, the new assets in the enterprise, right? Mm -hmm. In the information age, in the analytics age, models are the new assets. And so when we think about that, then we have to provide that governance and the trust. I think the word trust was earlier we mentioned. We, we, pride, we pride ourselves as a SaaS as one of the, you know, the trusted analytics in the market. We recognize for that. Uh, I also think that trust is huge in building the the value proposition for AI machine learning inside of enterprises. We have to be able to give people, uh, uh, customers, uh, and I say non-technical people, the belief and trust that you can trust the decisions we're, we're giving you or, or we're recommending to you based on the math that we're providing. And that, that's important. We spoke earlier and uh, you mentioned cloud is the new operating system. Yes. What did you mean by that? Well, I, I think that, you know, people... <laughs> We need to be careful. Everyone's flying up their flags of I'm an AWS shop, I'm an Azure shop, I'm a Google shop. And, uh, and I think you got to think back to like, okay, in the early 2000s when people were like, I'm a Windows shop, I'm a Linux shop, I'm a Solaris shop, I'm a HPUX. I mean, I think we got to take a step back and say, do we really think we want to tie ourselves to, the, to a single OS? That, that, that didn't work in the past. And I think when we, we look at the economic conversation that's going to happen in the cloud, customers are going to demand that, that portability, that movement's required. Right? Look what happened in the phone industry. Right? Everyone hated the fact they had to give up their phone number when they went to another phone provider. And then we, we, there was legislation saying you can retain your phone number. 
Imagine that same construct in the data world, right, where you can retain and move your data where you need to at a price point that makes sense for your organization. And that might be just a small portion of your enterprise decisioning that you want to put over on this cloud, on-premises, on another cloud, to optimize an overall ROI for the entire enterprise. That's the flexibility that customers are going to expect, and I think technologies like SaaS and, uh, and single store are enabling that portability and flexibility. Right? We, we don't force that on them. Brian, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much for the partnership. Look forward to changing the world together. You got it. Thank you, Oliver. Thank you.